Good morning. It's um, February the 9th. It's a proper cold winter's day today. Just the odd speck of snow or sleet just coming past me. It's pretty frigid. Um, must be just about freezing. Doesn't look it, but actually everything's a bit frosty here. It's, uh, um, it's actually kind of a thin covering of frost over the ground but not enough to actually make the ground hard but anyway what we've got here is i'll just show you this um we've got here this is a um, classic uh, um, roe deer um, scat um you can tell this is roe deer again it's it's tapered at one end and there isn't a if this was for instance, like fallow or red deer, for instance, it'd be a lot bigger, um, and also there would be a slight indentation at the other end. So this is kind of this is the classic, classic sign of row. Um, it's uh, again, depending on the time of the year, these because it's winter time, they're very individually formed pellets uh, as a as a dropping. Uh, when the spring comes on, and you've got a green flush of. Um, green grass and they're eating a lot of um, nutrients um, then you'll find it begins to clump together uh, sheep does exactly the same when the the sheep uh, begin to eat the very new um, grass of the, of the spring you'll find that they their scat begins to clump as well but roe or deer doesn't tend to clump so much together as sheep does uh, the other the obvious other one if you were looking for trying to identify uh, what species is or what particular animal. Uh, sheep is tend to be kind of rounder, more um, kind of globular-like rather than row, which is this kind of thin um, pointed kind of scat. Um, now, also with scat, this is frozen solid, this scat. So this I think was fresh about a day um, uh, yesterday morning, probably, um, it looks like. It's not shiny. If it was fresh, for a start, it'd be warm, but also it'd be shiny. Uh, with scat, um, you can also tell what this animal is eating, which is indicating indication of where you're going to find it. This is quite, I'll show you, uh, quite a dark brown colour. Well, got a lighty brown colour. Um, indicative of the fact that this rose probably been eating one of its favourite foods, which is acorns. Uh, so uh, you'll be looking for um, evidence of oak trees, which actually here we haven't got too far to go. If I turn around, there's oak trees just there, I'm here. So it's a good area for row. I know there's row around here. Um, over the other side of this um, small conifer plantation, um, there is, um, you quite obviously see tracks along the side of this, the other side of this. I think they're um, at least transitory um, through this area, but on quite a regular basis. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if you were to make your way into that small plantation there, you'd probably find evidence of lays. The other thing you can do with scat, also is the smell. Again, this is not too fresh, but yeah. I mean, for instance, if this animal had been eating um, apple, if, you know, if it's that time of year, you kind of get an apple smell of it. I know some people actually taste it as well. Um, the taste is also indicative of of what the animal's been eating. This is frozen solid, so it's uh, it's hard to get a smell on it. It is does smell of acorn, actually, tell the truth. It does have a smell of acorn. Um, so that yep so this is a classic roe deer scat uh, again if we look at this track there is a track where you can see the two dogs just leading through with my trusty tracking stick leading through here and you can see it heading off in this direction quite a well-worn track probably used by quite a lot of animals to tell the truth not one particular species but I suspect this is probably being used quite extensively by um, a row uh, to make its way through um, through the vegetation. 
Okay, I think we're going to stop there just because the wind is cold. Holding a camera is freezing my hands. Um, but what we might do is just follow it down a bit further and see if we can find a bit more evidence uh, of Roe. Right, uh, just to go, just to prove my point about this not being one particular species of animal using this track, I'm still on the same track, and what we've got here is fox. Um, I can tell this is fox, uh, mostly because the dogs love it. If I don't stop the dogs, they'll roll in it. But also, um, it, the smell is quite uh, pungent. Um, if again, if we're going to be interested to see what this fox has been eating um, this is full of all little tiny little bones um, but it's quite dark um, in color as well um, normally this fox would be quite a gray color but it really depends on what it's been eating this is quite frozen this particular scat but um, this fox is obviously using exactly the same track as this the row is so again this is a trail rather than a run of any particularly one species this trail is being used by quite a number of species to make its way through this um, this kind of open scrub area just for the sake of ease of travel yeah I think we will find just at this point here is the entrance into this this uh, conifer area just coming in winding its way through and um, heading into there so this is there are actually trails throughout this area this seems to be a very obvious area for ingress and into the small plantation area uh, of young trees I think um, uh, again you'll be looking for other evidence here of rubs territorial markings if you're looking for row um, they would have just shed their antlers um, and be growing new ones so not a great time of year for uh, finding the evidence of the classic uh, rub where they've been rubbing against the bottom of trees or against branches to create it but you'd be looking for things like lays and beds places where they've been sleeping at night and of course this time of year quite good because it uh, compresses the ground quite remarkably so you know you'll get a quite obvious area where uh, something large has been uh, compress the, the vegetation and um, particularly when you're looking for the dead bracken when I've been sitting on the dead bracken you'll find evidence of that so all in all it kind of gives a very good indication that here you've got um, at least a single doe uh, or buck um, using this um, this area of woodland and this is a um, in part of its territory um, again when you're looking at row uh, you've got a, the doe has a territory and the males have a territory. Um, male territories won't overlap, but the males and the does will overlap. Um, so um, you could have a buck and a doe in, in, in this piece of woodland um, as part of its territory. Right, I am definitely turning it off now because my fingers are completely freezing. Um, my hands are warmed up now. It's uh, about half an hour since the last last video we did, and I just uh, make sure my hands are nice and warm before I start again. Uh, very vitally important to keep your hands um, uh, warm and weather like this, just because uh, otherwise uh, the, the knees get cold. Not only do they get um, you can't use them, but they get very painful. And some of the most painful experiences having hot aches in your hands as your hands warm up as well that's that can bring tears even to the the, uh, the gruffest man's eyes but anyway what we got here is different this isn't a scat this is a this is a run um, as you can see it goes through here it's a very noticeable run through this bit of ground um, and this is quite indicative of badger I know it's badger because um, we've got this rubbing occurring over the top of the uh, the tree uh, stumps as they go over past this tree. So you're looking at something that's low slung and um, has brushed across the tree with enough force over time to actually remove some of the uh, the moss from the from the the tree. 
And why are they doing this? Well, there's a good reason for it. If you look further up here, this is all bramble um, and odd bits of branch or tree blocking the way. Doesn't make it that great. Further down, not so bad, but again, there are bits of tree blocking the path out. So this one here, you can therefore understand why a badger family would be using just this path just because it's the easiest method of coming through this open area of that's breaking the trees um, which has caused the, the brambles just to, to come up a bit it's it's nothing hugely obstructive to their way it's just that this is the easiest and being just like humans animals choosing the path of least resistance so um, create a very very obvious track through and then once you get through the break in the trees suddenly the track becomes much more diffuse because again they have now plenty of option to move wherever they wish through the woods which are now much more open um, and you can just see evidence of them stopping uh, scrapings at the ground there's a huge amount of uh, activity going on here, mostly squirrel and a little bit of badger, really. Um, so, yeah, if you are looking to be um, wanting to observe badger, a badger family, finding where the best site here, depending on wind direction, uh, light conditions, and also things like the background and everything else, your silhouette and stuff. Sitting here might be a good way of just watching a batch of family as they come through. Um, and of course, then you'll be thinking about where's the set. Um, obviously, they're on the way to somewhere. This is a track to and from somewhere. So is, a, is the set that side or is the set that side? And that's where you'll be thinking of, uh, of your next... Uh, um, Port in terms of tracking, in terms of finding where they're coming from. Right, I have to say it is much warmer in the woods than it is out there where this is a, again indicative of um, any survival tactic is the wood will be warmer than the outside where you have much more exposure to the to the elements so it is quite pleasant in here I would say it's about four or five degrees in the woods underneath the trees here compared to out there where it's just on freezing and actually quite uh, quite unpleasant. Apologise the dogs are going mad. Uh, I've still got this visiting dog who is still young <laughs> and I think they're having enjoyment with my other one who doesn't uh, get a lot of this nowadays because uh, just because uh, the other one, uh, the older one, doesn't do this anymore. So quite nice for her to have a bit of play. Of course, if you're tracking, that is exactly what you don't want. Uh, you don't want this kind of stuff going on. This will alarm anything that will hear this. Hearing dogs growling, uh, known carnivore, just a wolf, basically. Um, so this will, this is exactly what you is gonna cause you not to find anything now in this wood because this is gonna scare the living daylights out of anything that's considered to be prey an animal. So this is all about training an animal, training a dog not to do things like this. Okay. Oh dear. One last thing to know about uh, row when we're tracking a row. Um, since we're walking along the edge of this field here, we've got livestock in this field, is that um, <coughs> row have made a remarkable uh, come back since really um, the last uh, 30 years or so and um, one of the reasons is that they're not a um, uh, not exclusive to woodlands they're all equally a, uh, an open area grazer as well so when I was young I remember the row you would see in the fields coming down to eat the new shoots um, but the one thing they won't do is they won't graze in a field that's got livestock in them. Uh, I think it's because they don't like um, 
the the fact that um, uh, the ground is kind of unclean. I, it's got uh, um, sheep scat on it. So although roe will feed in the open area, and you will see them quite commonly in fields, you will not be, there is no point trying to track them across a field that's got sheep in it or livestock or cattle in it. They just won't, they won't, uh, you won't find evidence of them in there. Um, and of course Roe have made an enormous comeback in the last, um, well around this area for instance when I first came here about 15 years ago um, there was talk of them being deer but you never saw them at all. Um, very transitory, move through an area but you never saw them, They're extremely uh, elusive and equally people who had lived or have lived in this area all their lives had never seen a deer on the hill and yet uh, in the last four years um, more and more I've seen deer, deer does with fawns um, on the hill so quite obviously you've, we've now got um, resident populations now uh, in, um, in here and equally we have quite an unusual one the the expansion came out of uh, Mortimer Forest, which is down near Ludlow. Uh, it's one of the areas of uh, uh, row expansion in, in England. Um, the other one being down down towards Woburn Abbey Way and um, escapees from there. And um, the ones that came out of Mortimer Forest are rather unique, is that they've got very tufted ears. Um, so they're very, they are different from the row you'll find elsewhere uh, in England. Uh, quite um, a, an obvious in identifier for these kind of row is the, the tufted ears. And, uh, right, since we're going back into the, uh, the more open areas, I'm going to switch off now, stop my little hands getting frozen.